what? You don't need to write the whole word problem down. Just the title is fine. So word problems is two statements of equality. Um, so this is similar to our nickels and dimes problem, but we don't have value equations. We just have two statements of equality. We're going to write two equations, and we're going to solve by substitution or elimination. All right? So together, Charles and Mel picked 92 quarts of berries. That's an equation right there. Okay? Then it says Charles picked six more quarts than Nell picked. So how many quarts did each of them pick? Okay. So the first equation we're going to use C and N. So raise your hand if you can give me that equation, Ella. Good. So Charles plus Nell equals 92. Together they picked 92 quarts. Now we've got Charles picked six more quarts than Nell. So the way that I think of this is who picked less? Yeah, Charles picked six more than Nell. So Nell picked less. Whoever picked less is, has, is who you have to add to to make them equal. So does anybody think they have this one, Bethany? Yep. Nell picked less, so we're going to add 6 to write it an equal equation. So Charles picked 6 more than Nell. All right, do you guys think this is set up for substitution or elimination? Substitution. Definitely substitution because C is by itself. So I would probably do substitution. All I have to do is replace this C with N plus 6. Combine like terms, so my ends are going to add together. Subtract 6 from both sides. Divide by 2. So we get 43 quarts. Okay, so Nell picked 43 quarts. And now we need to find, well, how many did... Charles pick. What's the best place to plug that in, that first one or the second one? The second one's actually, well, probably easier, all right? They're both pretty easy, but let's plug in 43 for N, and all we have to do is add 6. So Charles picked 49 quarts of berries, all right? When was the last time you guys picked berries? You guys done that recently? Never? <laughs> Let's check. I know. <laughs> Dangerous. Sounds good. All right. The number of girls in Marvin's class exceeded the number of boys by 11. So there's an equation. If there were 37 pupils in the class, how many were girls and how many were boys? That's the second equation. That's another word for pupil. Okay. So the number of girls in Marvin's class exceeded the number of boys by 11. So Riley, who had less? The number of girls in Marvin's class exceeded the number of boys by 11. Who had less? You think, who do you think? The girls or the boys? I don't know. I, I don't, what do you guys? Yeah, the boys. The number of girls exceeded the number of boys, right? Exceeded means they had more than. There were more girls than boys, all right? So we have to add to whoever had less. So, Jackie, what equation would you write for that first sentence? Good. Okay. There were 37 pupils in the class. So, Sophie, what could I write for this equation? Good, 37 equals is right. Yeah, it's just the total number of boys plus the total number of girls equals 37, okay? Josh, substitution or elimination? Yeah, substitution looks way easier here. I'm just going to plug this in for this. Replace the G with B plus 11 plus B equals 37. Okay, I did not use parentheses on that only because... There's nothing we're multiplying by, right? So you don't really have to. So now I can add my Bs. So 2B plus 11 equals 37. 
all right? Subtract 11 from both sides, so 2b equals 26. Divide both sides by 2, and we get b equals 13. Label your answer, so boys, all right? And Nico up here, first equation or second equation is better, whoops, to plug into. Yeah, probably the first one. So I'm going to plug 13 in for boys. So Drew, how many girls do we have? 24 girls. All right. Everybody good? All right. The sum of two numbers is 98. The difference of the same two numbers is 40. What are the numbers? So the sum of two numbers is 98. That's one equation. The difference of the numbers is 40. That's another equation. So, Alex, how could I write the sum of two numbers is 98? Just guess. Use X and Y. Right. So they did not tell us variables, right? So you can use whatever you want, probably X and Y, just because you're used to those. All right. Now, the difference of the same two numbers is 40. So, Leah, what does difference mean? Subtract. So, Jordan, what kind of equation should I write? Good. So the sum of two numbers is, that's what we write. Difference of two numbers is, that's what we write. Okay. Now, Dylan, is this set up for substitution or elimination? You could do that, but something else looks really easy because, Dylan, what would cancel if we added down? No. The y. Yes. Good. Okay. 1x plus 1x gives me 2x. The y's are going to already cancel out. That's why this is a nice elimination problem. And we can add these, and we get 138. Divide both sides by 2. So we get 69. Sorry, you guys got? All right. So we have 69 for one answer. Go back and plug in to either equation. I'll probably use this top one. So we solve for x. We want to find y. All right, subtract 69 for both sides. What do we get? 29. All right, so you can always check and make sure, does it work, right? Do those two numbers add to 98? And when you subtract them, do you get 40? Yep. Okay. Yeah, Corey. No, yeah, you don't have to do that. Since it's a random <coughs> two-number problem and you're not solving, like, a graphing type problem. No, not necessarily. No labels on that either. Good question. All right. The ratio of two numbers is 5 to 4. So this is the one you're going to have to pay the most attention on because you've probably never seen the ratio type problem before. So if you've zoned out for a while, try to, like, tune in on this one, okay? So the sum of the two numbers is 63. The second part's easy. The first part is new. So we've got the ratio of two numbers is 5 to 4. Ratio, like what's another word for ratio? Fraction. So you might want to make note of that. Ratio means fraction. So we have a fraction that is equal to 5 over 4. Okay, is 5 to 4, that in the order that it goes. So anybody have an idea of how to write this? Micaiah? Nope, no ratio box. We don't have to do that. What do you think? close, but it's two numbers, so we can't just say N. Ben, what do you think? No, we don't want to use 63 yet. Nate? Yes. Okay. The ratio of two numbers, we don't know what they are, is 5 to 4. So some fraction is going to reduce to 5 fourths. Okay? That's basically what that, that is saying. Okay? So whenever you see ratio, write a fraction. Two numbers is, and go in order. This one's always on top. This one's on bottom. All right? And the sum of the two numbers is 63. That's the second equation. So, Dylan, how can I write the sum of the numbers is 63? Using the variables we already used. Yeah, what does sum mean? Okay, just guess. So what do you think? Yeah, the 
sum of the two numbers, x and y, equals 63, right? Okay. Now what we're going to do is solve it. We have to cross multiply here, okay, in order to isolate a variable. So I have 4x equals 5y. So always cross multiply. Now you can plug in wherever you want. I don't like fractions, and if I isolate one of these variables, I'm going to get a fraction. So what I'm going to do is actually do substitution at the top. So I'm going to subtract y from both sides here. So x equals 63 minus y. Okay. And then I'm going to take this 63 minus y, and I'm going to plug it in right here. So 4 times 63 minus y equals 5y. Distribute. 4 times 63, 252, everyone on board? All right, minus 4y equals 5y. Okay, we got to get all our y's together, so add 4y. And we get 252 equals 9y. So divide by 9, that's where this goes into 18 twice, 72 8 times. So we get 28. So probably go back up to that sum equation right here. X is equal to 63 minus Y, and I'm going to plug Y in as 28. Is that 35, you guys? Okay. So we get 35 for X and 28 for Y. Let's make sure that reduces to what we said, right? We said if X is 35 and Y is 28, what number goes into both of those? So does that reduce to 5 fourths? Yep. Okay. And do those numbers add to 63? Yeah. All right. Let's try it on the whiteboard. 